What's going on everybody? This is John Chain Gaming on the mic here coming at you with a brand new episode of the FCS Dynasty here on NCAA 06 as we enter week number 12 of this third season of the FCS Dynasty. Eight games once again on tap as we get a clear picture of the playoff picture. Who's going to make it to the FCS playoffs and who is going to come home? We're going to get some more answers here tonight, man. So I hope you guys are excited for this episode. If you are, make sure you go ahead and smack that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you want to be brand new as we start the first game of this episode. Checking out Michael Williams and the Catamounts of Western Carolina. And Michael Williams, certified bad man, already has 1,000 yard receiving. And we still got some regular seasons left to play. And speaking of Michael Williams, he's going to take it down the sideline and he is going to be gone like a girl in a country song how about that to get things started here in this episode a 73 yard touchdown now he will be flagged for an unsportsmanlike penalty i guess because he celebrated just a little bit too long but it doesn't change the fact that Western Carolina, they are going to put up seven on the board. And Catamounts looking extremely sharp here early as Michael Young is going to throw an absolute bullet out over to the left-hand side. Sue Animal doing his best to cover him. But, you know, that is a huge ask for just a sophomore corner when Michael Williams is the best wide receiver from a skills standpoint in the entire NCAA. And just in general... Western Carolina, one of the best teams in the entire country, 14 to nothing. And if they were actually eligible to go to the FCS playoffs, we would be really talking about them doing some serious work. But it's not all Western Carolina, though. Adam Cunningham, he's going to get an interception. That's going to help stop the onslaught that Southern has been dealing with here in the first half of action. So here we are, 14 nothing game. We'll see if Mike Hill can capitalize off the turnover. He's going to throw it up, and he is going to find his receiver in the end zone. Touchdown, Southern. And the Jaguars are going to cut this deficit right in half here, as that will just be a 14-7 game now. Michael Young, we're going to answer back here in Southern territory. We'll see if he's got the juice. Young drops back. He's got a clean pocket. He's going to throw over the middle. He finds a wide butt naked open receiver. And the Catamounts will take their first time out. Wide butt naked open, man. The coverage simply not there. Zoo Animal, the sophomore custom, is going to eventually make the tackle. But it's a goal line situation for the Catamounts. And Western Carolina, they are going to finish the drive as Michael Young is going to fire one into the end zone here and it is a touchdown once again make that 21 to 7 in sovereign i don't know what has happened to them since year number one they have just not been on the same level of sharpness especially after bringing in one of the best players in high school football in that year one off season but michael williams man what can is there to say about him he is just so good he is so freaking good. Joseph Pierre Martin, he was the last line of defense. True freshman, by the way. True freshman custom. He can't bring him down either. And it's an it's extended lead. Like, what is there? What can you do against Michael Williams, you know? Like, like right here. Zoo Animal, great coverage. It's really great coverage, but, you know, nothing you could do about it. 28-7 game here as Young continuing to try to lead his troops down the field. Gets it out to one of his other receivers. And that will also end up being caught for a first down. Again, Zoo Animal trying to get a deflection, but just outside the outstretched arms. And the Calamats will finish this drive off, dumping it off to the tailback into the end zone. It's another touchdown for Western Carolina. And I'll tell you what right now, we have ourselves an absolute onslaught. The number 8-9 team in the nation. This was a freeze test. For Southern, who has had a solid season. They're not even a terrible football team, I would say. But Southern just not on the same level right now. As Mike Hill will try to uh, fool that Western Carolina defense. Try to get the quarterback draw going. But 
the fumble is going to be forced and the catamounts they are going to stumble upon it so a red zone opportunity once again for Western Carolina as Young, he just has all day to throw this football, to moves it around in the pocket a little bit, does end up deciding to casually go ahead, throw that up. Joseph Pierre Martin, the true freshman, cannot make a play on the football. And Western Carolina going to end up winning this game 42-14, to going to end up being your final score in this first game of the episode. But now we go into... SEC Conference game, a big game here in the SEC Conference as we got Southeast Louisiana taking on the Cowboys of McNeese State. McNeese State coming in 4-4 four and four and trying to keep their fringe playoff hopes alive. They're going to need a win against Mateo West and the Southeastern Lions if they want to keep those FCS playoff hopes alive. Still searching for their first playoff appearance in this series. Both teams are and so this is a big game for both squads to try to you know solidify those playoff chances and when in doubt you gotta go ahead and throw it up to your receiver Mateo West one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside and right away that pressure is going to be applied to Kenny White and Kenny White's gonna start the drive off handing it off to the tailback and Southeastern not giving up much space right away as Benice states, they move the football down the field steadily. First and 10 from the Lions, 36-yard line. It's another handoff, and once again, absolutely lit up like a Christmas tree. Just trying to get that running game going so that Kenny White has more time to throw the football. But so far, haven't seen much happening. But how about this? McNeese State able to finally break a big one and it goes right into the end zone touchdown Cowboys how about that block on the outside by one of the wide receivers that was really paramount in terms of getting that touchdown on the board as now McNeese State can really get that offense going tailback gonna get yet another touchdown on the board here that's gonna make it 14 to 7 in favor of the Cowboys led by Kenny White the sophomore quarterback as again great blocking by McNeese State that's what happens when you stay patient with that running game even though it may not look pretty at first so now Southeastern is down but Drew Brown he's got a wealth of wide receivers Mateo West leading the group in this situation is Drew Brown already closing in on 100 yards of total offense and we are just getting started here as well one of the better quarterbacks in the conference 20 touchdowns versus just four interceptions thus far as now Brown dropping back but it's going to face immense pressure though Ricky Bentley is going to get his second sack of the season how and a big time to get that second sack as Manis State they send the blitz they sent five to six guys and Drew Brown just couldn't identify the man there so backed up a little bit here second and 15 but this time does get a little bit of time on the outside and delivers a strike that will put the Lions right in the red zone as they will look to go ahead and tie this football game right back up few plays later third and long drew looks to the outside gets it out to his receiver who takes care of the rest touchdown cowboys make that a tie ball game officially you absolutely love to see it and it will main tie for a good portion of this second quarter but then then we see special teams come into play and when they got the specially colored face mask visor you know that they are about to do something sweet and we got something sweet right here baby 65 yard touchdown puts the cowboys back up ahead as both teams will trade field goals throughout the second and third quarter still a one possession game but now we see kenny white getting a little bit involved in the offense they've been getting some immense pressure on kenny white but he has not flinched in this game just making the plays necessary to try to lead his team to victory. Start of the fourth quarter. White was still looking for his first touchdown of the game. And he's going to get it. Touchdown, Cowboys. And now jumping in to the fourth quarter of action here. We once again got ourselves a two-score lead. 
And now, Southeast Louisiana got their backs against the wall. Brown looks over the middle. He's going to deliver a strike, and that is good for a first down. That will get him to roughly midfield there. Wines are going to try to get them keys out because they are certainly on a drive. As later on in the fourth quarter, Brown looks up to the left-hand side. He wants it all. He wants a one-score game, and he's going to get it. Touchdown, Lions. Back to just one score, and both offenses playing extremely hard right now. Looking like a ping-pong match. And now it's Kenny White's turn to reserve. Looking over. Later on the drive, Kenny White is going to take a massive hit. And that is going to be a huge loss. Just four men being rushed. But that was more of a covered sack right there. As later on the drive, Kenny White looking to throw downfield. He wants it all. He's going to get it. And it's down in the 20, the 10. Touchdown, Cowboys. And McNeese State keeps the pressure applied to Southeast Louisiana as Kenny White going to roll to his right a little bit, facing some pressure. And still put his receiver in a position to make a play. And that receiver did just that. Is that 145 left to play? Southeast Louisiana can't score in their next possession, but neither can McNeese State. So this is big. Mateo West with a chance to make this a one score game. And it's going to be good. I just burped that sexy. And now a chance for the. Southeast Louisiana to potentially come back and win this game, but unfortunately, it is not going to happen. As Michael Garrett, one of the customs that actually plays the wide receiver position, got some two lane players here at Southeast Louisiana. It's going to be a touchdown for the Cowboys, and that could very well seal the deal unless Drew Brown can get a quick touchdown and eventually a two-point conversion. But with that interception, that is going to put any hope that Southeast Louisiana can come back and win this game. That will officially be put to rest right there as Drew Brown is just going to throw, I believe, just his fifth interception of the season. You know, he's been very good good about taking care of the football and both teams now will be sitting at five and four as mcneese states they will be going ahead and keeping their hopes to going to the fcs playoffs alive they still need to finish strong win at least their next couple of games in order to have a shot but now southeast louisiana they're going to be in some trouble five and four they will need to win out if they want to get to experience fcs playoff action so we take an update now at the noon action that has happened throughout the FCS in Maine. They take their frustration out on Buffoon Cookman as the Maine Black Bears. They improve to 4-5 and five after a 35-0 win over the Wildcats. Cookman still looking for that first win of the season. As for Texas Southern, they went on the road to take on Grambling State. And Texas Southern was able to pass the challenge as they win 42-28 on the road. And that does bolster their record up to 8-2 as well. However, Nicole, Nickel State does not take care of business. They're going to fall to 6-4 here. They fall to the Elon Phoenix 29-24 being that final score. So Nickel State now in danger of missing the FCS playoffs all of a sudden. Elon great win for their football program so we jump back into the afternoon action as we check in on portland state going on the road to take on the wildcats of weber state now weber state while number 24 in the nation again not eligible for the fcs playoffs because they are under ncaa sanctions right now but portland state with that national ranking of 38 in the country if they can Go on a hot streak here in these last few weeks of the season. They do have a chance to go to the FCS playoffs or at least potentially make that happen. However, that margin of error, of course, is incredibly small. And they got to find a way to contain Matt Mitchell, one of the best running backs in the Big Sky Conference. But so far, so good as Portland State does force a punt early in this one and how about this ryan otis the custom raccoon he's gonna take it down the sideline and he's gonna be gone 
like a girl in a country song. Touchdown, Vikings. And Portland State is going to strike first. Seven to nothing being your score. And they actually extend this lead all the way up to 10 to nothing. But Port Portland State, one of their drives, they do end up stalling out. And again, Mitchell, they got to find a way to contain him. But so again, so far, so good. Portland State able to get a fumble recovery. They drive it all the way down into the red zone. And, you know, something that's not talked about, Portland State, one of the best red zone offenses in the entire country. A 92% success rate. And they continue to add on to that. Great start for the Portland State Vikings. And speaking of great starts, we get another one thrown out to the side as Ryan Otis. He's going to take this one all the way to the crib. Touchdown, Vikings. Make that 24 to nothing as that touchdown was indeed thrown by a fellow custom recruit, Kyle Hardy. So a huge lead for Portland State as they are just shutting down the Weaver State crowd as there's another fumble. Portland State, they are going to recover. You can hear a squirrel farts in this stadium right now. I'm not joking to you guys right now. As Kyle Hardy, he does face a little bit of pressure up the middle. He does take the sack, but it is a hard hit as well. But with that being said, he is an extremely tough athlete. He's going to bounce himself right back up. And he's going to try to put the finishing dagger into this Weaver State squad real quick as Kyle Hardy drops back, looks left. He's going to get it out, but there's a fumble there too. And Weaver State will actually recover it. So, Portland State, they had a decent little drive there, but on the 37-yard line, they, of course, go ahead and cough it up. So now Weber State with a chance to make some things happen here as we see Aveline Thomas trying to throw it over the middle, but just an off day for him here thus far. And that almost gets taken all the way back to the crib. Eddie Robinson going to get his, sec his second interception of the season there, reading the eyes of the quarterback and pouncing on the opportunity as Portland State will get set up. They're looking real good. A chance to make this 31 to nothing here in the third quarter as Kyle drops back. He's going to look and he's going to be picked off too. It's a big man trying to go all the way downfield. This could actually go all the way, but the big guy does not have the foot speed. And Aveline Thomas has a chance to get his team right now. Their best field position of this game after Kyle Hardy is going to be picked off as well. Also thought that was going to be a touchdown, but great effort by the offensive players to not give up on that play. And Weber State, they do end up settling for a field goal, but hey, they do at least get the goose egg off of the scoreboard as of right now. As Emily Thomas will take yet another sack here as we jump into the fourth quarter now. Third and seven. They need this. Thomas looks over to the left-hand side, but it's going to be overthrown. And it will end up being intercepted. Daryl Thompson gets the, the jump on this football, takes advantage of the overthrow. And now the Vikings back in business, looking for a dagger. Two and a half minutes left to play in this football game. They get it off to the tailback. And the tailback is going to dive into the end zone there and we got ourselves a touchdown once again for the portland state vikings this was the kind of performance that they need to go ahead and put together as they are fighting for their fcs playoff lives and they do just that portland state winning this football game 31 to 3 being the final score so nice on them to go ahead and play spoiler here as Weber State is going to be kicked out of the top 25, probably for good for the rest of this season, if I'm going to be honest with you guys, unless, you know, some crazy things happen around the country for the rest of the season. But great win for Portland State. They probably won't get ranked when the new AP poll comes out, but they can work themselves in a position to still get that large bid to the FCS playoffs. And speaking of FCS playoff implications, we now got a top 15 matchup on our hands here. 
a little bit of action for us. We got the number 12 ranked Buffalo Bulls going on the road in Kent, Ohio in the greater Cleveland area. Taking on the Golden Flashes of Kent State, your two-time defending champions as both teams are going to be chasing Akron as of right now. This is a big game in particular for Kent State as the Golden Flashes in the next episode or at least you know, here in the next couple of weeks, they do have to go up against Akron for the Battle of the Wagon Wheel. So that's a really big deal. They're going to have to decide that at some point. But that being said, Lee Corso here in the game of the week is going to rock with the Buffalo Bulls. We'll see if that prediction holds true or not. But to start this game out... We do have ourselves a fumble on our hands as that is going to be recovered early by the Buffalo Bulls. So a little bit of sloppy action there to start this football game. And Buffalo with a chance to put points on the board early as we see a pass being thrown into the end zone. One on one and Terry is going to come down with it. Buffalo off to a strong start, going to lead 7 to nothing after one quarter of action. But then after that, Kent State, they realize who they are. They know this is a very critical game to assist with their FCS playoff odds. If to defend your national championship, you got to make the playoffs. And that is something that I really love about NCAA 06. You guys see that spin move right there? You do not see that happen in the newer NCAA games, particularly NCAA 14. And speaking of old games, how about this? An old one-on-one -on -one matchup. Uno taking it into the end zone. Touchdown, Golden Flashes. 84 yards ends up being that touchdown pass all the time in the world as well. Probably could have made himself a sandwich. If he was getting a little bit on the hungry side, I'm sure he's hungry. For that victory the way he's trying to finish this first half as now Williams looks to the left hand side again again another strike over to Uno and he is gonna have more than one touchdown we got dose touchdown passes for number one in this one 21 to 7 being your score and at this point Buffalo just trying to get into the locker room with a little bit of pride trying to regroup as they are you know, they start off strong in that first quarter, but Kent State really shell-shocking them. How about a 28-point quarter to wrap up the first half? That's right, 28 unanswered points after Buffalo takes that 7 to nothing lead. So, big things needed for Buffalo if they want to rally back here in the second half. They do at least start with the opening kickoff. If they want to make win this football game, it starts here. Buffalo needing a big play. They might get one right now. This is down the sideline, and he is gone. Touchdown, Buffalo. And it's back to just being a two-score game for the time being. But can their defense put together enough stops? Later in the game, Kent State's first possession here in the second half. Tyler Williams drops back, and it's intercepted by Seth Allen and how about this first interception to start this for the entire season great time to get that first interception on national TV on the game of the week and now Buffalo they did have a chance to try to close this game but they can only get a field goal and that 14 point deficit that was as close as it's gonna get as this tailback he hits the step back cheese if you know you know and this game certainly might just be barbecue chicken as the golden flashes they are flashing some great talent on both sides of the football not the most talented team on paper anymore necessarily but man they are certainly a well coached football team and they are going to be a tough out if they do make it back into the FCS playoffs we did see that last year and if this game wasn't already over I'm pretty sure it is now at this point as Kent State they get another turnover on the defensive side of the football there and that will do it here in Kent Ohio the golden flashes 
they are going to improve to seven and two on the season another solid campaign for kent state as they take care of business against buffalo which i'm curious to see what they're gonna do with the buffalo bulls at this point third loss of the season already going down to six and three but i mean they did lose to a borderline top 10 team so again you know we'll go ahead and see what happens here as we you know get through the rest of the season but buffalo definitely needed that win Speaking of both teams that could both use a win, we got Chattanooga, the Mox, going on the road to take on Jackson State, 5-4 Jackson State, and both of these teams right now in competition to win the Big 12 North. This is what the standings look like right now. Chattanooga, they got that one game lead over the rest of the division, but Jackson State, if they win this game... They're going to have the tiebreaker on Chattanooga and they will control their destiny at that point to make it in to the FCS playoffs because it is becoming more likely that either Western Carolina or Texas Southern go forth and compete for the Big 12 Conference Championship. So if that happens where one of these North Division teams do go forth and play against either Western Carolina or Texas Southern. They're both under NCAA sanctions, so they can't go to the playoffs. Then the North Division winner automatically gets the auto bid to the FCS playoffs. And, you know, we haven't seen any North Division teams make an FCS playoff appearance, so that's a huge deal. And starting off strong, Chattanooga getting a 7-0 lead early. But we'll see what Jackson State has got on us for. But not off to the start that you're looking for. In fact, now that I think about it, a nightmare scenario for Jaquan Gordon getting his hands on the football there. First and 10 from the 30. And Chattanooga, they are a extremely, and I mean extremely opportunistic offense. They are high powered for sure. But it's not just their offense that does really good things. Their defense can get the job done too as custom player Mike Thomas gonna run it into the end zone to wrap up the first quarter 14 to nothing and they're looking for that slaughter to continue Jackson looking over to the right hand side he throws it out he gets it out to Malachi Ross and Ross is gonna run away from the Jackson State secondary getting exposed and getting burnt in a huge way 21 to nothing now is going to be your score at the moment. And Chattanooga, man, you got to give them credit. They came to play. Huge moment for both programs. As here we go. Later on in the second quarter, Jackson State still looking for their first points of the game. And might be waiting a little bit. No! It's a fumble! And Jackson State is going to recover. Jerry Jackson beside himself right now his running back had a huge gain he, he just had to hold on to the football he had one job and he blew it thankfully jackson state could not take advantage but their receivers man their receivers are still lining them up all around the field jackson state you know they're still probably if we're being realistic right now they're about a year out from realistically competing for a ch conference championship or you know in this case an fcs playoff berth as we see yet another touchdown for the chattanooga mox and they got that train rolling for sure 28 to nothing being your score as ryan morris trying to lead his team back but he's just off today he is just not having a good day on the football field that's his second interception that he's going to throw and honestly, just one of those days where everything is going right for Chattanooga, but everything is just going wrong for Jackson State. No surprises here, unfortunately. As now, 31 to nothing with 30 seconds left to play in the first half. Morris still in the game. Chattanooga only rushing a couple, but still manages to throw an interception, and it's almost taken into the end zone. We almost had a big boy touchdown. We were robbed as it is going to ultimately be down at the one yard line. And Chattanooga still couldn't get a touchdown off of that. They settled for a field goal. So, I mean, they still got a massive lead. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, you would have loved to see them maybe cash it in on a couple of those turnovers. Did not happen, of course. But then the second half happens. And we get a look 
at Mike Thomas. Once again, special teams doing its work again. Gonna high step his way into the end zone there, dominating in every single facet of this football game. And Chattanooga, they are just gonna cruise here in this one as Mike Thomas is player of the game. Chattanooga winning by 40 plus. So we take another break now to take a look at the 330 games around the FCS. See what's worth stepping in. And New Mexico State looking very much closer to locking in an FCS playoff berth. Winning 42 to 17 on the road in whack action, playing up against San Jose State. Meanwhile, Georgia Southern continues its dominance in the SEC as they play against Wofford at home. And Georgia Southern blows them out, 53 to 12 being the final score. The Eagles improve to nine and one. As for Ohio, they're going to look to try to push for 500 as they beat Southern Illinois in MAC action, doing so in blowout fashion, winning 48 to 14 against this winless Southern Illinois team. As for William and Mary, they are also continuing that trend of blowouts here in the 330 slate, blowing out Hofstra. At home as William Mary improves to four and five thanks to a 45 to 10 victory in Conference USA play. So a few more games left to watch in this episode as we start to see the sunset as we go out in the Pacific Northwest to watch North Dakota State, the number five team in America, go on to Woodward Field in Cheney, Washington. To take on the Eagles of Eastern Washington. And they got a devastating eerie injury. Carl Johnson fouls in the starting quarterback. And sophomore custom for the Eagles. He is out for this game. And is not going to be available. So they're going to have to find a way. To beat the number 5 team in America. Without their starting quarterback. A tall task for any football program. Meanwhile North Dakota State. Trying to prove that last week was a fluke. As they barely beat Sacramento State 14 to 7 and now about that starting to find a way to get your running game going early as they struggle to run the football against Sacramento State in the previous week that's one way to build confidence in your offensive line you just run that football right down the throat of Eastern Washington and AJ Ferguson is going to finish the drive touchdown north dakota state and just a couple of minutes into this football game we see the bison strike first as eastern washington will go free and out but wait a minute it is not all roses here as peter bonner is going to fall on this football here so eastern washington they had a chance to you know maybe make things a little bit interesting but of course they go free and out, and then Ferguson, he is going to learn how to throw the football once again as we see Laron Montez, the sophomore custom, score on a 79-yard touchdown pass. That's going to make it 14 to nothing. I mean, look at the time that A.J. Ferguson has one-on-one. -on -one. Anyone could have made that throw. It was that easy and probably one of the easier touchdowns. Well, Rod Montez is going to have an entire collegiate career. But now, Eastern Washington, they take the field on offense. Looking to respond back, but trying to set up the halfback pass there. But they can't even get that set up. North Dakota State, they are not going to be fooled by that whatsoever. As Brewer blows it up. And an extra possession created by the Bison. As Ferguson takes it to the outside, he's going to run it into the end zone following the fumble recovery and not wasting any time. It's 21 to nothing already here at Woodward Field. As a backup quarterback, another Jones taking the snap for the Eastern Washington Eagles. But how about this? For a little bit of luck, it bounces off a defender and it's going to be taken into the end zone. Eastern Washington, this is how they get themselves on the board. Look at this. The coverage was really good. 30 almost had an interception too. But hey, like I said, man, sometimes it's a little bit better to be lucky than it is to be good. And man, let's be real. Eastern Washington, they got so lucky off of that. 
So it's back to a two possession game here as we see the kickoff. Mike Sapp is going to return it for the Bison. And he is going to take this all the way to the end zone. That will shut up the Eastern Washington crowd real quick. He's going to take a quick piss, it looks like, on the goalpost. That would have been a unsportsmanlike probably uh in today's college football but you know in the mid 2000s that's perfectly fine man it is what it is we'll we'll relic from 2005 as eastern washington continues to struggle here in this game it's not even that eastern washington is turning the football over that much necessarily they're just being outplayed plain and simple north dakota state they're trying to shed that label that they are an early exit team you know and one way to do that, you dominate everybody that you play along the way. And for the most part, except with a you know a couple of exceptions, they have did that as Chance Jones tries to scramble on this Bison defense. But just nowhere to run this football. And it's going to be a second and 12 for Eastern Washington as Jones tries to drop back once again. He gets hit from behind and is going to lose the football it's going to be recovered once again by north dakota state and look who gets there brewer brewer is the one that blows that playoff before it could even get going and it's another turnover that creates another touchdown for north dakota state make that 42 to 7 right now as they look to finish this first half strong ferguson on the option gets it out to anderson he's already got a thousand yards on the season adds on to it some more as that is going to be a 25 yard rush that will once again get the buys in of north dakota state and an opportunity to get borderline 50 points in one half that'll be absolutely wild and ferguson does indeed make that happen and no surprises here in north dakota state they strive for a massive victory 70 to 14 being your final score as north dakota state extends their winning streak to six games as now we jump into some rivalry game action here in the sec we got the cardiac cats of sam houston state now number 19 in the country taking on their rivals texas state now texas state on paper not looking back great they're only two and seven however that being said the thing about these rivalry games you absolutely never know what can happen so here we go we check in on mitchell mcjones the sophomore quarterback custom player he's been good for texas state this season and that is going to continue starting off the game with a 34 yard touchdown pass as mitchell he gets enough time in the pocket. He's going to make some things work. The team around him might have not necessarily been that great. But, you know, McJones been doing his thing. We'll see if the team can live up to the standard. And so far, how about this? A kick return for a touchdown. If you're going to pull an upset in the rivalry game, this is usually how it comes down. As right now, Sam Houston State, they low-key have an explosive offense but we haven't seen it here in fact all of their points have came on a random safety and they can't even capitalize off the safety that's absolutely wild to me how this game has gone down at the moment as we got a first and goal from the one yard line we'll see what mcjones does he hands it off to the tailback and the tailback is going to finish the run touchdown texas state and how about this for a surprise early 21 to 2 being your score and sam houston state only has 20 yards of total offense yes you heard that correctly 21 yards of total offense they're going to try to take a shot though and it's going to be intercepted couldn't remain patient threw the ball up and probably a throw that he definitely wants back as look as the coverage on this play this was not open triple coverage are you serious right now you simply cannot make that happen as now mcjones looking for another touchdown but he throws an interception as well that is going to be intercepted by david king who is one of the better sack leaders in the conference He's got a few sacks to his name but 
Also now, if I saw that correctly, he's got his third interception of the season. He has done everything for that Sam Houston State defense, but just not a good offensive performance for the Bearcats as a sign from the safety that we saw. They got shut out on offense today. You, you hate to see it. And Texas State, 2-7 Texas State. Their season was a lost cause. Well, maybe not so much now after they take out their rivals and put Sam Houston State in a pretty peculiar situation. If they lose another game, they might miss out on the FCS playoffs. And after looking like a lot coming in, not so much anymore. So for the final game of this episode, we got Big Ten action here as Southeast Missouri State hosting the Colonels of Eastern Kentucky, who is ranked inside the top 40 as of the recording of this episode and a key game here in Big Ten Conference action as Eastern Kentucky is just one game back of Southeast Missouri State. If Eastern Kentucky can take care of business on the road, they can put control their own destiny in terms of winning that automatic bid for the Big Ten Conference. But they got to find a way to slow down Lonnie Scott, who's been having a solid year Despite the inconsistencies on offense, they got over he has over 600 yards receiving on the year. As now we jump into the first play of the game. Eastern Kentucky, Chaz James is going to throw one over the left hand side. Dangerous throw. But Chaz James able to find a way to squeeze one in there. In between the safety as well. He's going to need to make some big time throws like that in order to have a chance to win this game. But I'll tell you what, that Southeast Missouri State defense simply built different we knew that this is one of the best defenses in all of college football and as of right now we're not playing they are not playing whatsoever and what's nice as well as as they do get their starting quarterback back jack travis johnson the true freshman ready to lead the way once again but the fullback is going to get some love he had a huge one butt naked open hole but he doesn't finish the run because he kind of forgot about the football he did not secure the football and it's going to be recovered by eastern kentucky so this game still remains tied at zero and this is the type of game that eastern kentucky can win because as long as they can hold it down against southeast missouri state's offense they only need to score a handful of points. That has been a weakness for the Red Hawks this season. The inconsistencies on offense. And we see it yet again as we're 30 seconds left in this first half. And we still have not seen anybody score. That's the crazy part in all of this. We'll see if that changes here in the second half. So we've got 5.05 left to play in the third quarter as Chaz James. He's going to go ahead, drop back the pass. Looks over the right-hand side. No, throws it across his body, and somehow his guy comes down with it. Even though Kelly Russell and Eric Davidson were there, it's great coverage, but just a perfect throw. Again, Chaz James, he's got to come with it, man, and he is so far. As his tailback is going to take a carry upfield, but it's going to be fumbled. Lewis Rose puts it on the ground, unfortunately, and Southeast Missouri State, they're going to get the fumble once again, as it does look like Kelly Russell got his hands on the ball there, and it still remains all tied at zero apiece. Still looking for the first points of this football game. Third and long. James facing pressure right away. Throws it down the right-hand side, and it's caught. Huge play for the Colonels. As again, double coverage coming down with a regardless. Chaz James, he's certainly him in this one. As he trucks to lead the Colonels downfield. Late in the third quarter, James looks to the right-hand side. Able to throw yet another great football. Eric Davidson makes the tackle. But for the first time today, we'll see the Colonels chilling in the red zone. And to close out this third quarter, Jazz James finally gets the first points on the board. Not only for his team, but in the entire football game. Eastern Kentucky takes that 7-0 lead and they hold on. So one of the most defensive games that we have seen in this entire series. Eastern Kentucky, they are going to win 
7 to nothing be your final score. So now the Colonels control their destiny in the Big Ten Conference. However, Southeast Missouri State, there is still a path for them to make it as an at-large, even if Eastern Kentucky does end up winning their next couple of football games. So before we go ahead and check out the newest edition of Sports Illustrated, let's check out some of the evening scores that are going down around the FCS. Starting with Rice, they played host to Southern Utah in what was a non-conference game. And Rice took care of business, bolstering their record to 10-0 on the season, winning 31-10, and they take care of business easily against Southern Utah. Also taking care of its business as well is Idaho. They went on the road to play against Stephen F. Austin in whack action. And Idaho does its thing, winning 45 to 21 being the final score. And Idaho improves to 7 and 2. However, it is not all roses for ranked teams at this time of day. As Troy ends up pulling the upset on the number 20 of ranked Arkansas Red Wolves. Troy wins 24 to 17 which could ruin the playoff hopes of Arkansas State. As for Northwestern State, they improved to 6-2 after a 42-21 victory over Appalachian State, as the Mountaineers are still surprisingly looking for their first win of the season. They fall to 0-9 after this free touchdown loss. As for San Diego State, opposite end of that spectrum, as they will complete the regular season once again undefeated. They're going to be the number two ranked team in the nation after a 38-21 victory over the University of Missouri, Kansas City. And San Diego State, for the third time in this series, will finish that regular season undefeated. Speaking of ranked teams, Central Michigan is another ranked team. They took on their rival Western Michigan. And while it was a close game, Central Michigan did also pull that out, winning by a final score of 28-21 in this ballgame. As we get later into the night, the attack, the action gets even more intense. How about Temple taking care of business against Illinois State in non-conference play? Temple winning 38-14, which bolsters Temple's record up to 8-1. As for Utah State, they will make their stay in the top 25 a little bit longer as they're now 8-2 on the year after a 48-20 victory over the Tommies of St. Thomas. However, Sacramento State might be in danger of missing the FCS playoffs once again. Another loss this time in overtime to Northern Arizona as NAU now 4-6 while Sacramento State 6-4 and, and on a two-game losing streak as of right now. And finally, we do have one more upset that I wanted to talk about. Conference USA action, UCF Falls to SMU as the Mustangs win 31 to 20. So UCF now seven and four. Gonna have to wait and see what happens around them to see if they can get a bid to the FCS playoffs as an at-large team. However, New Hampshire, the current number one team in college football, they will stay on top. They were given a challenge from Hampton. They did give them a game, but New Hampshire, they were able to pull away, winning by two touchdowns to remain undefeated here in year number three. So we now get a look at the Illust Sports Illustrated magazine to cover for college football. And, you know, one thing I will say right off the top, a little bit off target, Eastern Kentucky, we, we saw, definitely won that game against Southeast Missouri State. But how did teams like South or Southeast Missouri State, how far did they fall in the polls, right? So we'll go ahead. We'll start by taking a look at the top 25 polls, as we've known. First top five, top six spots, even the top 10. Top 10 is all the same. There hasn't been any movement for the top 10 or 11 teams. But then we start to see a little bit of change. New Mexico State and Central Michigan move up a little bit. Texas Southern is now up to number 14 in the nation. Northwestern State, they're back up to number 15. They definitely control their destiny to get into the FCS playoffs. Idaho is chilling at number 16 right now. Utah State with a pretty big jump. They're up six spots after beating a St. Thomas team that they should have won in the first place. But then we get some teams to enter the top 25. Eastern Illinois is in there. Seven and three overall, five and two conference record. They get in at number 18. Southeast Missouri State, they got shut out. They moved down four spots. Buffalo is down eight, but still hanging on into that AP top 25. 
and then a bunch of new teams as well eastern michigan is it back in at number 21 eastern kentucky number 22 in the nation smu is in there at 23 tulane at 24 and then that last team in the top 25 we got mid tennessee state they are back up in there eight and two overall on the year and looking quite possibly might have a chance to make it into the fcs playoffs this year now as for other teams that are receiving votes right now north carolina a t state portland state we saw them win against weaver state in the previous um you know in their previous game they're receiving votes south carolina state is in there chattanooga is in there montana and south sam houston state they're also receiving votes as well so what does that mean for the heisman watch as of right now well ryan vaughn he's still sitting at number one he's put together some really great stats this season as well but problem is the regular season is done and there's still you know two three weeks of football left to play so that's going to be an issue as well moving forward does ryan vaughn hang on or does somebody like an ikeda woods come in and take over uh that uh heisman front runner of a junior quarterback out of georgia southern who had a solid game three total touchdowns for him it was a blowout michael williams we saw had a really good game as well particularly in the punt return game he ends up with two total touchdowns he has 2,000 all-purpose yards michael williams certainly a problem uh for the cannon mounts he is a great wide receiver for sure but then a little bit of movement outside of the top three robert johnson moves up to number four the senior quarterback has led rise to an undefeated season he has over 2300 all-purpose yards 22 touchdowns he was big in their win against southern utah and then rounding out the group we got terrence jones threw for 400 yards and four touchdowns but despite that moved on down not really giving terrence jones a lot of respect but don't get it twisted he is a very talented quarterback here as well and it's gonna be a very exciting heisman race as we get into the last few weeks here of the regular season as for the ncaa players of the week robert johnson speaking of the devil he actually wins the offensive player of the week in the ncaa the senior quarterback like i said was very dominant against southern utah no definitely no surprise as he's had a really good year so far and that's continued as rice really fighting for a top eight seed that's going to automatically advance them to the second round and same thing could be said for north dakota state top five in the nation sophomore linebacker chris brewer getting ncaa player of the week huge win against eastern washington 70 to 14 ends up being that final score by the way and in that game we end up seeing him have eight tackles three tfls three sacks multiple forced fumbles and a fumble recovery this dude simply all over the field and eastern washington who was reeling without their starting quarterback simply never had a chance whatsoever so that takes us into week number 13 and you know really having a tight race there for the final fcs playoff spots who's going to be able to be clutch here in these last few weeks of the season we got you know a couple more full weeks and then you know we'll start to have some more limited action here as we get ready for the fcs playoff reveal it's going to be fun but in the meantime more regular season action coming in the next episode as we will figure out what we are going to see in regards to who is going to lock things up in various conference races should be a fun episode i hope you guys are real excited for it if you are make sure you go ahead smack that like button hit that subscribe button as well if you do happen to be brand new to the channel this is john jay gaming the mic signing off but i'm hoping you're all out there having a good one take care everybody